do the sex. Today's locker room talk and shots topic is how to dominate your man. That's right, ladies, women, people with vulvas. We are going to talk about how you can dominate your male partner or your penis owning partner. This is a 101. So if it's something you and your partner or just you or they have approached you with are interested in, but you haven't really jumped into it, we are going to give you a guide. Me and my guest who if you have been around any time at all, you're familiar with. If you are new to this channel, my guest is my very best friend, the local Russian dominatrix, <laughs> local to my life, uh, Lucy. Lucy is a dominatrix in her regular life, her home life, her intimate life. She's been doing this for years and years and years. And um, she has been on the show to talk about doming, uh, to talk about male chastity. She is the guide through Locktober when uh, penis owners everywhere can get their cocks locked up in cages uh, and teased, tortured, played with, whatever, for the entirety of the month. Uh, but Lucy, I'm going to let you reintroduce yourself briefly to my listeners. Hi, everybody. I uh, Lucy, obviously, was just introduced. So I am the local podcast dominatrix. <laughs> um, and I, we've been doing this for quite a while. And I have been on many, many uh, podcasts over the years at this point the locktober ones the toys ones the dominate your dude podcast that we already did but we're redoing it take two 2.0 this is 2.0 dominate your dude 2.0 we have a 1.0 that you can actually go back to the audio podcast head up to the link in my bio the audio podcast we have a 1.0 but it was more of a discussion and not a guide this is your mm -hmm. guide this is your walkthrough for someone right. ready to ready to launch into some uh, bdsm yeah. Gently launch. <laughs> Gently. <laughs> I'm always like charging in. You're always yeah. like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So listen to her, not me. I am not a pro. <laughs> I have played in the arena of domination. Yeah. I feel like it might even be my natural path. But Lucy really lives it out and is mm -hmm. going to be able to tell you exactly what you need to do. It's early for us. We're having coffee. Yes, we are. Coffee and domination. Let's get ready to talk about sex. Cheers. Cheers. All right, Lucy, I think the best way to kick this off is just for you to tell people how you, first of all, how long have you been dominating your dude? I feel like I lost count, but it's been at least a decade plus. All right, so 10 plus years of experience, folks. How did you end up doming your guy? For people out there who have been playing with the idea, it might help them to know how someone ends up in this situation. It was uh, a request that my partner asked me about and uh, suggested. And he was like, hey, at, at that point, we've been together for at least a couple of years, maybe four or five. And uh, yeah, he just came in and said, hey, do you want to try some more fun domination type situation? And as the person that I am, I said, absolutely, yes, this is great. Let's do it. <laughs> So it wasn't a surprise to you? Not really. I feel like we kind of did a little bit of that, even at the beginning with just the silly things you do where you, you know, grab up uh, your tie and tie them to a bed or something, something very more generic or more vanilla, I guess people would say. And then um, after some amount of years, we just kind of expanded our horizons in all directions. But I was always more dominating just to begin with i was the one who initiated our first kiss but yeah so it was just kind of like a natural progression that we had all right so she just dominated him from the get-go but no he presented it to you you were open to it mm -hmm. um and at the end of this podcast, we will maybe give you some tips on if you are in a position of wanting to bring it up to your partner ways you can approach that mm -hmm. uh, 
All right, let's just start with a really clear overview. When we're talking about dominating your man in bed, what does that mean? What are, you know, what does that mean for our viewers? What does that look like? I mean, it can look almost like anything you could think of. So in a dominating bedroom situation, you are definitely in charge of the whole sex activity. So you come in and you say, I'm the boss, and you deciding on whatever play you're trying to do, be it bondage or pegging or furniture, fun times, we'll get to it, or other types of uh, situation, and then you are in charge and you just let them know what is going to happen in like a scenario type way, and then you act it out. It's, and it can it's like a play that yeah, you like put a, on. And you call it a scene yeah. when you're coming in to do it. It's called a scene when you're coming in to do it. It can also include impact play. But the point is, yeah. it doesn't have to be all of these things. It can be any Anyone. one or a combination, depending on what your interests are, right? Exactly. As well, it can just be a little, if you are, especially with the starting situation, it is more the commanding presence that you're showing. So instead of letting your person know, hey, can you get me a cup of coffee? Simply say, so-and-so, I need a coffee right now, in like a more dominating voice. And don't ask. You command the action to occur. Yeah. yeah. Suck my now. Suck my clit. There you go. On your knees. Exactly. Wash those dishes in an apron naked. I'm sure talking fun. about oral sex. She is talking about dishes. Hey, you can I, see our needs are different. <laughs> my dish has been dirty, so here we go. <laughs> <laughs> house. Mm, my clit, clit needs some attending to now let's talk about myths and misconceptions i mm -hmm. think that generally speaking the conventional socially accepted norm is oh the man is dominating the woman in bed right. and i feel like a lot of men uh people with penises people who identify as a male figure are afraid to admit that they want to experience domination. And I also think that oftentimes, especially in the cis heterosexual world, mm -hmm. uh, women can shy away from wanting to dominate and dominating and can have a negative reaction to being asked to dominate because uh, they feel like it means something about their femininity. So can you address some of those myths and misconceptions? They are, yeah, they're all very much myths, according to 7,000 Reddit posts that I have read about this topic. <laughs> it's a good source, by the way. There's quite a few Reddit groups that are just great for that. But so many men do want that vu vulnerability. So it's, it's since it is about control, like men have to be in charge so much of the time in their jobs and their kind of in their lives. They're, they are forced into this charge role by our societal the you know, patriarchy. Upbringing. Yes, those guys. And a lot of the time, I don't think they necessarily want to be in charge all the time. And I, I mean, like nobody does. Nobody does. Being in charge is a lot of work. It is. To be in charge in every area of life when you have a partner, especially if you have mm -hmm. a partner and family, it's fucking exhausting. Exactly. It's completely normal to crave yeah. someone else to take the reins for a while. Exactly. And sometimes the your person with the penis comes home and they're like, I've been in charge of my whole life for the, for the last eight hours and I just do not want to be in charge anymore. Can someone take over? And that is when the domination kind of situation comes through where they are giving you away the charge right. and then you can say, hey, suck my clit, do the dishes. At the same Coffee time, now, you know, I don't know. All those things. Wash the dish, then suck my clit, go back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. I but can yeah, come it's, up with it's definitely not... I think a lot of people want that. It's not emasculating to a man to take charge. And look, there are also tons of surveys, lots of studies mm -hmm. that actually show that men who are very dominant in life out in the, the non-bedroom, non-sexual right. uh, world 
desire being dominated. It's a source of catharsis. And a lot of women find empowerment Mm -hmm. uh, who are, regardless of if they are, you know, powerful outside of the bedroom or not, it's an empowering experience for a woman to be able to take charge in that way. I, I was listening to a someone speak about dominating and a sex expert, if you will. And I love the way they said it is uh, when you go into a dominating scene, whether you're the dominator or the one being dominated, the persona you're bringing in there is sort of like a, 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 costume you get to put it on for a while it it does not define your whole personality you get to put on the submissive costume Mm -hmm. you get to put on the dominant costume and just enjoy that experience in the moment and then when you are done you can go back to being whatever you are so misconceptions if you are a woman dominating in the bedroom it does not mean you are not feminine in fact there are tons of high femme dominatrix out, out yeah. there who are just like embody femininity. And the same for uh, men, masculine people who want to be dominate, uh, dominated and play the submissive role. It does not mean that everywhere you go in life, you're, you know, not masculine or whatever this bullshit is out there about a beta male, which is, you know, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Um, assignments of character by the patriarchy, which is hurting you. It's such a narrow minded view. We are such multi dimensional people that you can have 27 hats and most people do. I mean, your work persona is not the same as your home persona, not the same as your friend persona, not the same as your lover persona. It's all different. I hope. How boring of you if it is. Yeah, if you are very mo- monodimensional, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Stop that shit. We don't like that. That's not no. sexy. All right. Well, um, Let's say things to consider before jumping into dominating your dude. Top considerations. Safety first, always. Recommending um, to know where all your safety things are. Like if you are doing rope stuff, where your scissors are, if you're doing any sort of um, like lock type things where your keys are to the locks, Um, perhaps review your CPR just in case. Choking. If you're doing some choking. Yes, exactly. Some of this stuff is obviously not, I mean, I feel like since it's 101, don't do anything dangerous and don't just go Geronimo and jump all in. Definitely safety first, respect your boundaries, make sure you establish all the boundaries. I think that's another very important stuff. Establish all your boundaries before you jump into anything. I think we're going to send a picture of the little contract that you can use where it lists everything and you can check off saying, hey, yes, okay, not okay. Right. So beforehand, there is a contract that you can use. It's a BDSM contract. The two of you can sit down. And I think there's yes, maybe no. Yeah, yes, uh, maybe no. Yeah, Mm -hmm. to different. uh, Hard no. like Right. mm -hmm. To different activities in dom scenes you can say i am interested in this i'm not interested in this hard no on this Mm -hmm. um and you both need to be clear on that of course a contract can change i'm sure what you did when you first started uh, dominating your dude Mm -hmm. changed drastically as time went on and you can be tiptoe in deeper but to start that needs to be super clear consent 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 Yes, consent, boundaries, safety. You have to be very mindful of all those things. Do not just, yet again, jump in without actually discussing any of these things with your partner that you're dominating or being submissive to. Especially submissive to because in some situations it can get dangerous as well as unhealthy because you might get abused and that is unacceptable. Right, right. Also, prior to starting, you got to choose your safe words. Absolutely. And sometimes practicing using your safe word just in day to day life is a good way to judge how well your partner will respond in a scene situation. Just get together, decide your safe word. And even if it's a remote like disagreement that is happening at the time, perhaps it is like the dishes that haven't been washed in two days. And you're like, hey, do the stuff and yellow yellow and they start 
being mad at you and you can say, um, uh, whatever your safe word is, guacamole. And everything needs to stop at that point. And if that is not happening, that is not a good situation. Which brings us to building trust before you dive in. This would be a great example of right. how to work on building trust before you dive into dominating or being dominated. Back to the safe words. I love the idea of the safe word practice. Perhaps for beginners, mm -hmm. using the stop signal safe words is a good idea because it's like really clear what that means. Mm -hmm. Green, it's a go. Yellow, it's like, all right, we're hitting kind of this. Mm, I, 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 if, if you, you might need to bring it down a little bit. Red is hard stop. Whatever you're doing, stop. Everything stops now. Lucy is beyond that and likes to use <laughs> vegetables as her safe word. I feel like it's not something that would come up otherwise. So it's very jarring while somebody yells guacamole at you. But red is fine too. But red, <laughs> yeah. Whatever is easier. Whatever. You come up with those ahead of time. And if you are gagged, a sign. A sign or holding something in your hand, you can drop. drop. Yeah. Because gagging does happen a lot, even at the 101 level. People love to do, mm -hmm. you know, make it so that people can't talk and people Properly, can't yeah. see and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have um, signals that are easily and quickly rec uh, recognized. Mm -hmm. What are some other ways that you can build trust in advance? Oh, some other, another good thing would be if you are into domination type situation, uh, there's quite a few books that discuss all of it. And then maybe if you can give your partner one of the books and see if he actually reads it, and then you can discuss it, that would be a good way to build trust. I think the other thing that is a big trust builder, uh, when you are looking at that yes, no, maybe list, that in and of itself is a trust building exercise be in the sure. sense that when you exchange, if you are... If you react natively to someone's fantasy or interest mm -hmm. and mock them or are like, ew, or what, or why would you like that? You are going to break trust instantly. Anytime you react negatively or judgmentally to someone's defensively. interest, defensively, mm -hmm. to their interest, uh, uh, fantasy, dream, whatever it is, you're going to break trust. They aren't going to feel com comfortable or confident being open with you. And I get that sometimes it's hard because maybe you didn't know your partner would be interested in something that is a hard no for you. But the thing is, you can hear it and you don't have to do it. Absolutely. You can say, you can say, oh, uh, I that's a hard no for me right now. I hear that's something you are open to. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, be prepared to learn things you didn't know about your partner's fantasies and interests without holding judgment. Remember, fantasies are just fantasies. They happen in this world. They don't have to enter the actual real world. You don't have mm -hmm. to participate. So that would be another really key thing to building trust. For sure, yeah. You must be able to have conversations about sex, even just normal sex vanilla sex with your partner without any sort of retaliation or judgment or eos or negative type feedback heading into the first scene mm -hmm. what are the best beginner domination scenes for a couple a man and a woman mm -hmm. trying out this man as submissive woman as the dom Okay, so I think the first things would just be the verbal commands that you can do just in your general sex activity. As Annette was saying earlier, you can say, lick my clit, harder, faster, softer, um, get on the bottom, I will be on top and in charge. Um, Maybe start by just practicing owning what's happening in bed, telling yeah, him what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for instance, if you are like, you know, go down, lick my clit, suck it. You can grab his hair a little bit mm -hmm. and just, yeah, push his head down. There you go, yes. <laughs> Maybe push his head down, but starting with just that verbal command. Mm -hmm. I like to add in when I'm dominating a dude, making him thank me 
for everything he gets to do to me. That is a really so good one as well. After he licks or while he's in the middle of doing that, thank me. Thank me for this opportunity. Tell me how good it tastes. Mm-hmm. That's a good one, yeah. Like, thank you for letting me into your pussy. It's a good one. I mean, you should do that anyways. Thank a woman for that, but. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes thank you for letting thank you for sitting on my face mm-hmm. uh-huh. yeah. so but the woman in this case should be commanding that demanding things mm-hmm. and this is where i think step two could come in so maybe the first time you're dominating you keep it verbal mm-hmm. and then the next level could be if this is something that you're both interested in you want to like level it up to impact play adding in a light spanking if that's what he wants Mm -hmm. Uh, then commanding things and like giving a little like smack on the ass or a spanking should they not do it to your satisfaction Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah you can also just if you are sitting on the face for example which is one of my favorite you can pinch their nipple really hard oh You've negotiated all of this ahead of time. Yes, of course. But you can start then working up into adding in different types of punishment, establishing what kind of punishment is. If they are interested in punishment, obviously. Or maybe they just want to be restrained so you can, yet again, grab a silk scarf. Those are pretty sturdy. Tie their hands together or tie them to a bed frame if your bed frame allows for that. And then they're kind of more restrained, but then you can still tell them what to do, like with my clit harder softer Mm -hmm. a little to the left whatever it is that you need and then yet again go up from there depending on what you want to do if you want to introduce some more interesting scenes like when maybe it is the dishes that you want done that day and then you can put them in an apron and have them naked that's one of my favorite so you can roll uh, like if, if you can role play that yeah, yeah you can say do the dishes and then after they're done then you can tell them now they uh, such a good boy they are come good lick my clit boy. as a reward yeah so reward yeah. is part of the dominating your guy mm-hmm. you know it's not all just punishment and telling him what no. to do don't forget to reward um you know, having them on their knees is an easy way to dominate for everything that happens, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that is an act of submission. Something else that you could do is a uh, foot worship. Just not that they have, like, if you're not into your toes being sucked and stuff like that, cool. But, you know, like, um, licking your shoe, using your foot to, like, put on their head or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, that's yeah, something absolutely. you could do. Well, I mean, whatever you checked off your list, you can start trying a little bit at a time. Right. And something I think that could be helpful, especially if you're a man or you're a man who's new to this and you're worried about feeling emasculated or that affecting your masculinity is after you get done with your scene, you could then take your partner in a very masculine dominating way and sort of like balance you know, how you feel inside, if that's something that you need after your first couple of times. Let her dominate you. If this, Especially if this is something you've really been wanting to try, but you have not done any work to sort of undo the patriarchal conditioning that tells you you're not man enough if she dominates you in bed and you feel like you need to find balance afterwards, let her dominate you according to what you're wanting. We've outlined just verbal domination. We've outlined a little bit adding impact play in. Mm-hmm. Um, R- even minor restraints. Minor restraints, even a little bit of feminization with an apron on. If you're not comfortable with the apron thing, you can put on a... a you can put a fancy one of those masculine ones that say... Barbecue. Like barbecue. Barbecue. Yeah. You know, start there and then fancy. <laughs> work your way down. But then afterwards, you know, like your aftercare, which we're going to get to in a minute, could be mm-hmm. then you get to be really take on the masculine role and like, be intimate with her in that way. Now we're going to jump into the array, the breadth of options that come with dominating your guy and the things he might be interested in, but uh, either afraid to tell you or you should prepare yourself to see on that negotiation page, the contract page. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Obviously, you know, the verbal domination, they may be interested in being verbally dominated to the point of degradation, humiliation. Mm -hmm. If you want to know more about that, scroll back. Uh, I have a video on YouTube with a kink master sexpert, Lisa Finn, who talks about how to do the humiliation play. Mm -hmm. Impact play. Yeah, impact Let's talk play. about the breadth of impact play really quickly, like the different tools, how far that can go. Um, you can, I mean, there's a plethora of tools. You can start out with your hands. You can go to spatulas in your, in your um, kitchen. I mean, obviously clean ones and then clean them again. And then hairbrushes. Things you can buy now. Things you can buy now. Uh, there is um, paddles, paddles, whips, floggers. floggers. Floggers are the nicer ones you can start with, especially if it's quite a big flogger. Those don't actually hurt as much. They're more like sensual even. Um, definitely for whips, you got to practice a lot because those will leave quite a bit of bruising if you're not doing it correctly. Um, canes are great. Um, make sure, obviously, you know areas that you're not supposed to hit, like the kidneys and uh, on the back and stuff. Floggers are great for backs because you can be pretty gentle with it, but anything that becomes more impactful, like paddles and canes especially, you have to uh, keep away from organs that can be damaged. You don't want to actually injure anyone. <laughs> um, and I am, I am positive that there's like a picture you can find online where to not hit mm -hmm. um, for medical purposes and stuff so yeah and remember when you start with impact play do not start with a hard swing no 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 don't You're don't like gentle. pull back and go 100 percent. you start with very gentle mm -hmm. uh, spanking and then work up an in intensity using those words, the, the right. safety words. This is where the, the red, yellow, green works mm -hmm. well because your partner can say yellow to let you know you're getting close. So you kind of know that the micro mm -hmm. increases in impact up sure. to the hard no. And as well as keep your partner excited because the more endorphins that are flowing through their brain and body, the higher they can go because that will also know some of the pain and it will be more exhilarating for them all around. Yeah. Yeah. So keep them turned on. It's not just hitting them. It's sexual, right? Yes. Then we've talked about restraints. There's all different kinds of restraints from simple rope play. Again, make sure if you're going to use mm -hmm. rope, you've got scissors nearby to cut them loose should you need to in a pinch. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's all kinds of handcuffs. Make sure that you have the keys. Right. I mean, there's even more intense there's, there's uh, like restraints. Restraints that are leather that are nice. Some um, who that are Velcro. I love the Velcro ones because mm -hmm. they are they're easy release. They're mm -hmm. more comfortable. Right. Um, also, Lucy has a stockade that comes down from her ceiling. Like I mean, medieval torture. You would be. Me medieval torture it can go there mm -hmm. if you're advanced yeah, i have a, an arm one and a neck one so you can kind of adjust it's nice now one thing we haven't talked two things we haven't talked about yet that i want us to just breeze over a little bit mm -hmm. i have in-depth episodes on each of these mm -hmm. a butt play pegging we've done We've done one We've on done, pegging yes. as well. Um, it was, again, more of a conversation. We may come back to it and go in depth with pegging because mm -hmm. I think it's an important topic, especially when you're doing right. it with a penis owner and you have a vulva and you don't have the same anatomy. It's good to really know what you're doing. But many, 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 many uh, me, men and, and people with penises and prostates desire mm -hmm. anal stimulation let's go back to our myths and misconceptions like anal play butt play with men in no way emasculates them there is such an incredible pleasure center for them that mm -hmm. is often equated to the g-spot in women uh so if your partner brings up that they want you to do Anal stimulation, anal play, uh, pegging. Mm -hmm. Don't freak out about that. Yeah, don't don't, <laughs> don't go, assign. Ew, gross. Right. Understand, like, there's a reason for that. It's like, extremely mm -hmm. pleasurable for them. But maybe let's. Uh, you can go back and listen to the full podcast. But quickly, how do you introduce that? 
starting with <laughs> yes starting with, with a finger <laughs> with a finger and, and then unless you have kind of a, a weird thought that like i don't know if i can do a finger you can get a tiny butt plug and start with that instead tiny tiny and then work your way up and butt plugs yeah. uh you don't have to start with a strap on for pegging no. you can just get a dildo of any size and start small i guess sm- <laughs> this is where penis size on the smaller side mm-hmm. is great. a plus <laughs> yay <laughs> Don't listen to what all the dudes out there are saying about dick size. They don't know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, start with a small dildo yeah. and work your way up. And then and then definitely start using, don't just strap on your harness situation and go for it. Um, start with your, using it with your hand. And then so you can kind of tell how far, how close, what's going on. And then they can give you better feedback as well. And then go eventually graduate to bigger things and eventually as well to a um, harness situation you can wear. Right. Now, again, I've got a full podcast episode on that. Scroll back. It's it's not too far back uh, on my YouTube channel uh, at Annette Benedetti. And then there is male chastity, which I would say is Lucy's claim to fame on this channel. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Cox in a cage, folks. Cox in a cage. Um, right. That's another domination activity that you can incorporate into your fun playtime. And yeah. it can just be for the duration of the uh, sex activity that or scene that you're engaging in where you can put your uh, person into a cage type situation and then use all the other options available to you, like their face, a dildo. Mm-hmm. Just have them hold it or... Uh, have them use it on you and then i don't know and if you come back to humiliation play say well this one is so much you can say that this is so much better than your penis Mm -hmm. that's dominating that's dominating yes so yeah uh you are gonna want to i am telling you remember way back when you first told me about male chastity and i had i was like i don't know why anybody would ever want to do that then I got to play with male chastity a little bit, a little bit. I never hmm. got the full meal deal. And let me tell you. Was it fun? Was uh, it, fun? <laughs> it really was. It really was. I think like if you are in a sexual situation where you have that openness with someone and that ability to like really communicate with them and play in this realm of you know the unexpected it is it's it's exciting it's sexy mm-hmm. a cock in a cage just ladies listening men everybody listening what surprised me the most is how sexy a cage around a cock that's excited looks mm-hmm. like it's fucking hot think of it like jewelry it is like jewelry or like almost like in some ways like lingerie on the cock. But you're right. I think jewelry maybe is a better way to put it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that a lot of men instantly feel like, oh, you're putting my penis in a cage. No way am I going to let a woman cage my penis. Yes, you are. And you're going <laughs> to love it. You're going to love it. And remember, there is safe words for this stuff as well. So. Even though the ladies are in charge in this situation, you are still in control. And if you say your safe word, everything stops. Right. So, look, I feel like we've walked you through some 101 entry level steps into this uh, dominating your dude wor- world. The most important things are number one, addressing all of the misconceptions that can be scary like within your relationship, like have the conversation Mm -hmm. that removes the shame. Acknowledge that these are just play roles and that it in no way speaks to who you are as a man, who you Mm -hmm. are as a woman in the relationship. Uh, So addressing those misconceptions, uh, then discovering what the things are you want to try out, Mm -hmm. do that contract, build trust by not being judgmental as you share Mm -hmm. the contract, then set the scene. What are the first things you want to try? Even if you're like, fuck it, let's just go. Let's just go, don't. And I'm going to tell you why. (laughs) Because sometimes 
you feel that excitement, you jump in and do it and it, and it's jarring. This is like, it can be a very jarring thing. And though it seemed so great to jump into, you go balls to the wall and do it all and suddenly, and, and it jars you in a negative way and then it just, then you don't wanna do it again. Yeah, it scares traumatize you. Traumatize yourself. And it, cause it can be like getting into domination, especially if you're like, hey, let's do the impact. Let's do the butt play. Let's do all of these things. That's an intense thing to put your body through. It's mm -hmm. not just pleasure. You're mixing in pain. You're mixing in mental, um, mental domination, submission. Mm -hmm. If you're throwing in humiliation, you may be fucking with your own like internal trauma. So it's so important to start just like start with a bossy bitch in bed. Being a bossy bitch in bed. Mm -hmm. Like that's fun and it can be hot even in a vanilla situation. For sure. Then take next steps. Like okay, I'm interested in some impact play. Start at Level grounds one. level one just pull the hairbrush out and get a little spanking or pinch the nipples i liked that idea yeah. a little pinch of the nipples a pinch of the skin um and work your way up if pegging is part of what you want to do start small and then from there you know you build up maybe you try cock cages and That's now is a great time if you're jumping into wanting to try to dominate your dude and you start now and work your way up by October, Locktober, you're gonna have us to guide you through male chastity and locking up cocks all through October. And last but not least, aftercare. Aftercare, yes. Make sure that after the scene, you put away all the things and then just decompress and snuggle. Whatever you need to do, just kind of like calm down from the high. You can't, it's sometimes, yet again to the jarring situation. If you go all out and then there's no like downtime, that can mess with your brain as well. Like you need that downtime to just kind of come down from the high and be present back to your body, so to speak. Snuggle, have a chat about it. If you can't quite chat about it yet, you will still, that is like a requirement. You should talk after the event. Say, here's what worked, here's what didn't work. Here's what we should try next. You know, you have to, and yet again, be respectful and kind and absorb all the information. It's not necessarily a criticism because you never know jumping in, will this work or not, especially if you're completely new at the situation. So right. if something didn't work, just be like, well, there's 700 other things we can try. So it's fine. Again, and, don't get discouraged. And, and. I think also knowing what someone needs in aftercare, which can be different for each Absolutely, person, yeah. you know, um, and that may be a little bit of an experimentation for you. And and not just aftercare for the person being dominated, but also the person dominating. Mm -hmm. So kind of an example I gave uh, during this podcast was that the man being dominated, if it's new to him, he may need to like do something to reclaim his masculinity or what feels like masculinity to him. Similarly speaking, the woman it being the dominatrix, if it's new to her, may need something that makes her feel feminized and that you still see her as this like sexy feminine being. Mm -hmm. Again, it's unfortunate that that's like the reality of our conditioning, but make sure to talk about like afterwards, what can we do to like come back to ourselves and and feel connected and reassured that we're both super attracted to in love with if this is a, you know, important long-term partner with each other. Um, along with as your domination activities like get more intense, if there's impact play, you may need to bring someone like ice to cool down hot spots or, mm -hmm you know, may need to rest and like recuperate from, mm -hmm. you know, being flogged and pegged and oh, spanked for hours. <laughs> so uh, aftercare is important. It has, it, it has to yeah. be discussed and preferably decided on prior to starting. For sure. So you at least have things near you to mm -hmm. do that aftercare. So I think I think we covered just like your entry. You've got some entry ideas mm -hmm. into uh, dominating and and your man and getting started. If you have questions or comments, 
um, things you would like to know, whether you are the guy wanting to be dominated or the woman wanting to be dominated, please drop a comment. If you're on YouTube uh, below, I do go through all of the comments. If yours doesn't show up because I review them first, it's either because YouTube has said you're too naughty to go public or um, because you're being rude. Uh, no, but do drop a comment and I will get them at like Lucy and I will answer them for you either in a short or in a, a longer format style or mm -hmm. an article or whatever we can. So drop a comment or email me at Annette. It's A-N-N-E-T-T-E -T -T -E at sheexploreslife.com. Um, I think that's it, right, Lucy? I think so, yeah. Now go out and be dominated or dominate, or dominate you know, and let us know how it goes. I want to know how it goes. If you listen to this and you have Did a first time, tell us about your first time. That'd be fun. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be fun. Tell us about your first time. We want to know. If, if we can't be there to watch, we want to hear about it. Yeah. All right, guys. So until next time. Cheers. Cheers. We'll see you in the locker room.